Hi, I'm Eric Sable, and today we're going to be touring the Allerton Direct Digital Control System that controls all the heating and cooling in the house. It's unusual to have a system in the house like this, as they're mostly in big buildings like the Empire State Building. I worked there one day. <laughs> I told them they could have it. Uh, Merritt Avenue in, in Norwalk, 353 Merritt Avenue. I was there all the time. All the buildings along 95 in Stanford and all the newer schools and office buildings have these kind of systems. I subcontracted for Jerry Chesley at Automated Building Systems for 20 years as an installer. And in the last 10 years of my career, I was at Unilever World Data Center at 55 Merritt Boulevard in Trumbull, Connecticut. Um, I was an installer and programmer there. The system was huge and they really needed somebody full time for that building alone. And it just so happened I had done a lot of the installation and worked my way in and wound up uh, subcontracting directly for Unilever and Al Hennessy. I have the desktop computer right here that interfaces with, my system has a micro view, it's one channel with 64 tuxes, it can handle that one channel. Uh, I only have three tuxes on my system. Uh, one for the jacuzzi, one for the boiler and wood furnace, and one for the family room and air conditioning. I originally installed the system for the jacuzzi, uh, but the thing is I could actually use this system to test and program sequences for Unilever. So the house was like a test rig. Um, I could test everything out here and then go down there and just load it into the system and know that it absolutely was going to work. Why don't we uh, take a look at some of the controllers that we have on the system here in my house. Okay, this is my Windows Micro View. It's an Apex with one trunk line. All the DDC programming in this Micro View controls the three tuxes in the cellar trunk line goes out the back of this unit and it goes down the wall to the cellar. The cable you see coming out the bottom goes to the desktop. It's much easier to look at all the points in the system on the desktop. You could actually put a whole pile of points on that little LCD screen. Uh, this thing is powered by 24 volts AC. Okay this is tux number one and this is for the outdoor jacuzzi. You can see it's fairly loaded up. It's a 653 and it controls two one and a half horsepower pumps. There's a filter pump that's a uh, low speed, high speed, and then there's a jet pump which is a straight one and a half horsepower. There's the two pumps. The inner one by the wall is the filter pump that is a low speed high speed and the one closest is a jet pump both are one and a half horsepower on low speed the filter pump is one sixth horsepower the jacuzzi is heated off the boiler and has a 75 square foot diatomaceous earth filter I cross-connected the discharge piping from both pumps to facilitate an automatic bumping process that I programmed into the system. This is the jacuzzi control panel. You have a micro set on the front and that little red button is the heat push button. It's paralleled outdoor air actuated button which is that little diaphragm airflow switch right there. A momentary press of that button will give you 45 minutes of heat despite set point even if it's up to temperature. The micro set can read several things. It can read the loop temperature pump's not running now, it has to actually run and draw the water from the tub to sample it. I get outside air, it's 39 degrees right now, and basically 91 is the set point, which 
is on a sliding scale depending on outdoor air temperature. Originally I had the 653 mounted inside the panel here, but there's too much electromagnetic interference when those contactors slam in and out and jumbled up the programming, so I had to move it to the outside. You have two main two-pole contactors and those are for each pump, one for each pump. And then you have that single pole contactor that switches between high and low speed on the filter pump. Now I can bring the heat on by pushing this button and you'll see the filter pump will come on in low speed and then jump to high speed because it's calling for heat. And you can see over in the bottom right there that's the heat relay and you heard the boiler pull in. Now, when I push the button again, I can turn the heat off. You see the heat drop out, the boiler dropped out. But what's gonna happen is there's a 45 second run out to make sure all the heat is out of the heat exchanger. When this pump shuts off, the jet pump will come on for four seconds and Shoot the water backwards through the DE filter, pumping the DE, and then that will shut down and it'll be ready to go next time I go out and sit in the dark. This maximizes the DE life. Here we go. Four seconds. Perfect. The auto bump feature maximizes the life of the uh, DE and the filter and you get maximum flow that way. Okay, this is tux number two. It's a 16160. It's basically a stupid tux. It basically doesn't have any programming in it like the 653 over there on the jacuzzi. The 653 has all of DDC for the jacuzzi programmed into it so it can stand alone. And that way, if you lose communication with the micro view upstairs, it'll still run. The 16160 is dead in the water without the micro view. All the programming for this is in the micro view upstairs. And this basically controls all the boiler functions for the heat and the cooling also, the AC. This is the wood coal fired setup that I've got on um, the wood fired boiler. You can see we're running coal today. It's in the occupied mode because you can see over here the little LED on the rib that pulls in that circulator for the boiler. And when it does that, it tells that tux 16160 I'm good to go and all the zones in the house are in the occupied mode. And the Weil McLean 5 section boiler is locked out right there. See that rib light on? So the oil burner will not run at this point. It's totally running on the wood and the coal. The 16160 also controls the domestic hot water circulators. I have no shortage of circulators here. This box that's mounted here on the pipe you can have a temperature located right at that spot and also that's where the connection is made to the well sensor that's in the top of the boiler back in the back there I don't know if you can see it right there but that box also has a switch in it to silence the alarm in case the alarm goes off the boiler fails so that's basically tux 2 right there Okay, here we have Tux 3, and this is for the family room. You can see right now that DOs 1, 3, and 4 are on. DO 1 is the heating call for the circulator to run. 3 and 4 are for low speed and high speed on the fan coil that's running upstairs. I built that in so that it could be staged as the closer it gets to set point. It drops to low speed and, and then drops off as it's like a half a degree below set point. The cooling relay is the other rib on the 
right hand side of the box up there but we're not in the cooling mode right now when the wood fire gets down to 150 degrees that zone will drop off automatically let's go look at the micro set for this okay this is the micro set for the family room we're set at 73 but with this you can see what the room temperature is it's 70 degrees right here and it'll go away and it's 69 degrees at a bead sensor that I have in the cabinet under the counter uh, we can also look at our outside air temp here 34 now and if it, it says one it's in the occupied mode because the wood boiler is running when it's not running it'll say zero and when it says zero we can punch in a number of hours to go into the occupied mode manually right there up to 16 I have set this is the fan coil unit that I was talking about before where the two relays for low speed and high speed are located in this unit okay we're back up at the desktop and I have only one screen now. I used to have three screens, but my son formatted the C drive on this desktop, and that was the end of that. Everything got lost. I've been putting the pieces back together ever since. I can give you a rundown on how this thing works. All of our set points and temperatures and digital indicators are on the screen that are critical at this point. You can see first we have outside air temp is 40.3. Outside air heat enable is set for 60. So the heat won't ever come on unless it's below 60 degrees. And we have the outside air AC enable. The AC won't come on unless it's above 64. That way there we're not heating and cooling at the same time. I took control of domestic hot water and it's a 147 right now. Set points 138. It runs over because I sampled domestic hot water for five minutes every 25 minutes. And you can see the hot water circ is on right now. It's sampling. The boiler's not calling. After a few minutes in the sampling mode, if it needs, the boiler will come on. But there's an on delay of one minute. There's our boiler alarm set point. If the boiler falls below 75 degrees, that little horn downstairs will go off and can be canceled by that button on the front of the boiler. If it gets down to 75 degrees, that's because you had a flame failure. I had to rewrite the boiler program and this is the set point. It takes a little while for the system to pick up what the temperature actually is. So I have it set kind of low current set point at 172 generally a boiler will be over 180 degrees by the time it shuts off this column here just tell you what the wood boiler temperature is right now 150 the oil burner is at 148 Erica's room temp is 64 it's manually off Erica's off Erica's enable set point is when the wood boiler gets to 199 degrees then it'll go into the occupied mode with a dead band of 10 and then it will drop out. Master bedroom same thing 15 degrees 64 in the master bedroom. Master bedroom unoccupied set point 64. The family room bead temp is 67 Erica's unoccupied set points. I just added these points randomly because I discovered I didn't have them. There's the unoccupied set point for the family room because it dropped below 67 degrees. There's a dead band of one degree there. And that 72 is a set point on the micro set. The way this works is when that wood boiler temperature is running and it gets up to 190 degrees, boom, it puts the zones into 
occupied mode, the family room especially. The other rooms, it would have to go to 199. And basically, there's our set point. I can change that, say if I want the wood boiler to jump into the occupied mode, you know, I can set it here. 190 is working good for me these days. You can hear the fan coil shut off because it's over 67 degrees. The wood boiler dead band is 40 degrees, so as it's cooling down, running out of coal or wood, whatever, and the temperature gets down to 190 minus 40 or 150 degrees, this circuit's all shut off and everything goes into the unoccupied mode. Here's our outside air oil enable. It's set for 30 degrees. Below 30 degrees, the oil burner will run in tandem with the wood boiler. Above 30 degrees, it's locked out. Right now, it is above 30 degrees, so you see it's locked out. So, it's going to run on the wood stove. But the wood stove's not running, so the boiler will maintain the temperature. I have an on delay for the family room of two minutes. It's an anti-recycle timer if the power fails in cooling mode. You don't want to slam that compressor on and off on the condensing unit outside. And I have an off delay set for 10 minutes. Nothing really changes all that fast. The thermal mass of that family room is astronomical. That's why I have to let the oil burner run with the wood boiler because Sometimes you just need that 350,000 BTUs. There's the upper limit and lower limit for that micro set downstairs. I have the family room set for unoccupied all the time. There's the hours that you could punch up on the micro set and it's off right now. The average temp between the bead and the space sensor on the micro set is 67.6. And I believe I use that as a control point. I really don't know. I lost track of everything. Okay, we have a, a bunch of stuff for the jacuzzi now. Right now, tub temp is 84, but that's the loop that's in the basement. The pump comes on, it'll sample that and draw the water from the tub, which is really probably around 92, 93 degrees right now. The heat status is just whether it's heating or not. The heat button is that button I pushed on the panel downstairs, also one outside. You push that button, you get 45 minutes of heat and it goes off. That's in case you forget about it. Bump. Now, it bumps every time the pump shuts off, as you saw. But at the same time, if you're sitting in a tub, after a half hour, it'll bump. That on button on that micro set, I set for 0.2 minutes. Heat delay is one minute. I built this little program here. This is what's so good about this Allerton system. The flexibility is, is just unbelievable. I can hit this pump one shot and this will turn on the filter pump. But because it's a momentary contact, I had to build a little program in the sequences so that when I click this to go on, you heard the pump come on, but that one shot will cycle off automatically. See? Now the pump will run in 45 seconds, time out, and bump. I have this jets on off here. I can actually turn the jets on from here, but if I turn it on here, I have to turn it off because it's a latching point. I just never got around to making it a momentary. Here's our nice little option that we have, the wood boiler circ. 20 minutes, I push that button on the front. I can set it for whatever. half hour I might do that because 20 isn't cutting it you heard that bump so the pump is off now the wood circ override that's when I'm starting it up ice cold and I want to heat up the wood boiler from the oil burner push that little button and hold it for four seconds down there and it will start the wood circulator and run for now a half hour. Now this 205 set point you see right there, I didn't get around to really plopping a lot of descriptors 
on the screen, but I, I know what that is. Say you have the coal-fired boiler going full bore, and it starts to get really hot in the house, and it shuts all the zones off. Well, you got a problem because now that coal, you can't stop it. So at 205 degrees, it automatically turns on the jacuzzi and dumps all the waste heat into the jacuzzi like a cooling tower. 210 is if the jacuzzi is drained, all the house zones come on, all those normally open valves will spring open, all the pumps come on and dump the waste heat that way. This Boiler rib status tells us if the boiler is running or not. Right now it's a no-go. Seller set point. It's a little reset schedule. I wanted to get rid of it, but I just haven't got around to it. Okay, here's our tub set point. It's on a reset schedule. Generally, I, I'll change this. Is, is it summertime? I really want to have that, that thing running at 89 degrees to cool off. But right now the reset schedule runs that when it's 65 degrees outside the set point is 90 when it's 30 degrees outside it's 92 I can change that you know um, basically you know when it's when it's like 30 degrees and it gets down to 20 0 5 degrees around there you know you really want to have that at 94 now you can see there's a set see it changed that's how long it takes to change three seconds and I'll explain why that is well what I had to do was go back to my winter interval I had this program before but I I put it back in every 90 minutes the filter pump comes on and samples if the jacuzzi needs heat when it's five degrees out it pays to add a little heat every hour and a half it's much easier than trying to heat up that monster eight yards of concrete and 800 gallons of water from like 84 degrees all the way to, to 92, 3. So the best way to do it is just sample it every hour and a half and the water sample is 120 seconds. The heat on delay is one minute, 60 seconds. So as soon as the 60 seconds is going by, and that thing needs heat, it'll come on and stay on until it gets up to 92. And generally it's not that long, believe it or not, all winter long. There's our pump run out of 45 seconds to get the heat out of the heat exchanger and then the bump, four seconds. So, and this, this is our pump status. It's off right now. Basically, that's our screen. This is the DDC that's located in the micro view or apex. So we'll go to edit DDC and you can see now we'll have a sequence. They start from zero and go to 9,999 and we can advance this sequence number one, three, 50. We like to leave room in there in case you want to add something later on. This sequence 120 is important. As you see, it's a temperature convert. All you have to do is know where your outside air input is terminated on what tux, and it's terminated on tux 1, 2, analog input 0, 3. So we're going to convert that input to degrees Fahrenheit and send it to IBEX 12. It's good to use IBEX points. You, they plop them on the screen and you can work with them. So we can even look at this. This is real handy in Apex DDC. You can actually read the values. You see that 71.6 there. Those are 3,000 ohm thermistors. The input for Allerton is Honeywell's 10,000. 71.6 it's like a percentage out of zero to 3,000 converts to a temperature of 40 degrees, which is what it is. So we can see, here's a, a good example. 
IBEX 12, which is outside air temp. We take IBEX 12 and we can shoot it to Tux 1-1 AIO2. So now the jacuzzi is Tux 1-1. We'll know what the outside air temperature is and can run its little reset schedule. We'll use IBEX 12 quite a few times in this program. That's why it's good to have it as an IBEX point. There it is. There it is again. So the Apex scans through all the sequences I've programmed in here. Generally what we do is go to 5000 and at 49.99 and put end of normal sequence device. That's because in the normal sequences you can use subroutine callers and I still have in here starting at 5200 a program that I built up for Al Hennessy at Unilever that um, generally they have two 210 ton train rotary screw machine chillers there for the data center and the way it works is when you have one chiller running you got one chill water pump running but sometimes Al wants to run two chillers at the same time <laughs> it's like 420 tons of cooling so automated building systems neglected to give them the feature to turn a second chill water pump on to run along with that other the next chiller so this is what this system does all he has to do is hit a two chiller run button and boom will automatically switch to both chillers on and two chill water pumps so this sequence goes from 5200 all the way to 5500 in here it was not easy making that happen I can tell you right now 5518 from 5200 we can go back to zero the way this apex works is it scans through every single one of these things it goes to that subroutine caller inputs the inputs to the subroutine gets the outputs back and goes all the way through the whole thing to the end which is 9,999, all in the time of three seconds. You remember how long it took to change that set point? Three seconds. <laughs> I, think, I think we're looking at alien technology here. <laughs> they got from Roswell crash. That's what all I can think of every time I do this stuff. It's insane. But three seconds is an eternity when you're traveling at the speed of light, so we can get out of here. Now that's Apex DDC. We have Tux DDC, and we have two Tuxes on the system, and we have to configure for it. This is Tux 1, so okay, yeah, we'll do that. We'll go to the function menu. What do we want to do? Let's read the DDC from the Tux. It takes a little while to get all of that out of there and bring it up here on okay let's take a look at what we got in there starting at sequence zero that's the jacuzzi that's loaded into a 653 we configure and we can look at tux one three the family room job we can load that ddc from that tux Done. So we have this. And that's it. There's a fair amount of stuff in the tuxes. And they have to coordinate their DDC with the DDC in the apex. That's why the three second delay. The great thing about having the DDC and the tuxes like the APLC and 653 is they can stand alone in the event of a power failure 
you'll see this little green LED that normally blinks to tell you you have communication. This will become solid and it takes the program and burns it to an EEPROM in here as the power dies. Then when power is restored, it automatically reloads the program to itself and takes off running. It's unbelievable. Bulletproof. I have the same three tuxes since day one here. Never had to replace them. And how many power failures? It's unbelievable. There's really a lot more stuff you can do. You can do even a user audit here. Anybody logs into this thing, records date and time, and you can see every time I log in, and it even says what I did. Problem with the system, you got to keep an eye on it and uh, just make sure everything's running. Take a look at it every once in a while. Uh, most building managers have no idea what's going on with this thing. And it just sits there and runs and everything is like kind of half working and nobody knows why they're freezing or sweating. Basically, that's it for the house systems. It only has three tuxes on it. Well, that just about wraps up the Allerton tour for today. Thank you for your time.